What's up, B-Squad? It is your boy, JB, and we are here today with a brand new review for Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 15, you guys, episode number 15. This episode is titled Sip and Spill the Tea, you guys. So before we go ahead and jump into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any other on the channel, and you guys aren't subscribed yet, then I need you guys to do me a huge solid favor and stop taking me out on this date and having me pay for it at the end of it. Now you guys know the routine, you can do me that favor by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, turning on your post notifications, and also by sharing the video. And with that out of the way, you guys, without further, without further ado, let's go ahead and just get into this episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, shall we? All right, you guys, so this episode, I'm going to be real with you guys, I was kind of bored watching this episode last night. This episode, it really, truly gave nothing. I mean, boring. And this is the episode before the season finale, because next week is the season finale of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Ugh, this season. I don't know what happened with this season. You know, it's so interesting, because when the women do their interviews, when they're on the press and stuff... They talk about how good this, oh, this season's going to be good. This is going to be a good season. They've done this for the last two seasons, saying how good the season will be. And then we get to the season and it's lackluster. Like, I just don't know what Real Housewives of Atlanta needs to do to, you know, have a, a semi-decent season because, huh? Yeah, this season just gave me nothing. Crickets. Let me know what you guys have thought about it. Have you guys enjoyed this season of Real Housewives of Atlanta? There have been moments where I've laughed and whatnot, but it's just interesting. Because I have no, I actually just noticed this last night watching the episode that Kenya, we didn't really have any much of a storyline for Kenya this season. And I know people were talking, I know some of Team Twirl was on Twitter talking about the fact that she had the um, Kenya Moore hair supply, right? But Bravo didn't show any of that. She's not very little of it, if anything, at all. I think we may have saw it, the build, the storefront at one point, but other than that, we ain't saw she nothing. But yeah, I want you guys to tell me what you guys have thought about this season of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Like I said, for me, it's just fallen pretty flat. Very flat. Flat, flat like a soda flat but yeah let's go ahead and get into the episode you guys um we'll start up with the scene where we didn't have much so the first scene we're going to start up with this sonia you guys there was i mean when we hit talk about sonia it was just a blip of a scene with sonia i was like wow that was all she had in this episode so you guys remember in the last episode we found out that sonia was pregnant right and so this week she she Ross and Ducey went to go see Dr. Jackie, you know, just to confirm her pregnancy, right? And I was like, why did you bring, even Dr. Jackie was looking at her like, oh, okay, let me take my mask off because Deuce was there. I was like, because Dr. Jackie was like, girl, how much have you told him? And I was thinking the same thing like, Sonia, how much have you told him? And then I was like, wait a minute, Sonia, you're actually coming here to get confirmation that you're pregnant. So... They're not just going to do a sonogram, girl. Ain't they going to stick something up your vagine? Like, ain't they going to look up your vagina as well? And I was, and I was, and when we saw her in the stirrups, I was like, I thought I was correct. I was like, ooh. But Dr. Jackie lets her know that she is five weeks pregnant. And so she was like, when, sorry, you guys. So I got the watch on. So, you know, sometimes she thinks I'm talking to her. And sometimes she will actually just completely turn my camera off. And I don't understand why it does. Oh, I'm ashy. I should lift them up. <laughs> I'm ashy. But yeah, got the watch on. So she heard something that I said. And I don't know what it was. But Sonia was wondering, like, how soon can she find out the sex of the baby, right? So Dr. Jackie let her know that you can find out as early as 10 weeks. And I was like, okay, that's cool. Hmm. You guys, I was about to say something, but I'm going to leave it alone because that show was on hiatus until October. But somebody, if you guys watch Sisters, please remind me to say this, speak about this when we get back to it. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, she can find out as early as five, 10 weeks what the sex of the baby is. So 
once again, congratulations to Sonya. I know that, you know, this was a rainbow baby, that this baby, she actually ended up miscarrying, but the baby that she's currently pregnant with, congratulations to her. I hope that this is a, a healthy pregnancy, right? Dr. Jack even brought up the fact that this is a geriatric pregnancy, right? So in, I, anybody that's over the age of what, 35 is considered geriatric? I'm like, oh, okay, very interesting. But let's pause here and move forward, guys. All right, you guys, so a lot of these scenes in this episode felt like they were just out of place. Because this scene with Marlo, so we see Marlo, and Marlo is holding an event for, you know, for foster care, right? And I was just like, this seems so out of place. This honestly felt like a last-minute scene. They were like, we needed something with Marlo in this episode, so they threw that shit in because this just did not seem like a real scene that they initially wanted to use because for one all the girls weren't at this event the only people that were at this event when we first started it was Sonia and Courtney and that was it Sheree wasn't there because Sheree had some other stuff that she was doing and I was just like are we just feeling like is this a scene filler this episode was like I was just like huh but again, this season has been like me and Schoolboy were tweeting uh, each other last night, and we I was talking about how disjointed this uh, season uh, feels, right? Because this season felt like they rushed to put it together. This actually feels like this. This is wor This is this season to me is about as bad as season thirteen, the COVID season, because they rushed with that season. Once everything was lifted, they tried to get every, you know, they tried to do do everything that they could, but following the, you know, the guidelines of COVID protocols. And it, it kind of feels similar to that. It just feels a little similar to that to me personally. But I want you guys to tell me what you think. I know a lot of people are trying to, I know a lot of people are blaming production, right? I'm not going to sit here and place blame on anybody, so to speak, because it takes, it's just a, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But yeah, this season just, it's just, it's all over the place. It's like a, uh, it's like you're trying to put together a puzzle and you miss some pieces. You're like, oh, here's the piece, here's the piece, here's the piece, here's the piece right here. Let's put it together. And then you put the puzzle together, be like, oh shit, that ain't what, how that puzzle was supposed to look, huh? We put, we just put places, we put things in the wrong place. That's what real house, that's what this season is given. A fucked up puzzle. Um But yeah, Marlo had the event. She was honoring people in the foster care. I don't know if those, these were people who work for foster homes or if these are people who are actually in foster care and came out of it and did great things with their lives. I was a little bit confused about that situation. If you guys understood it, let me know in the comment section below. Because I was confused. Sheree. Sheree eventually showed up and all of that screaming that they did. I was like, oh my God. They literally sounded like cackling hens. Ah! Ah! I'm like, oh no. Stop. Bitch, you better be glad I love you. Bitch, you lucky I love you. Bitch, you... Bitch. Oh God. I'm just like, please make it end. Please make it end. Like, what is this? What is this scene? So let's pause here and move forward, you guys. You know, I'm actually kind of confused about these next scenes because Candy and Drew, right? You guys know they're they're doing the, the movie, but they included Candy and they, they had a solo scene for Drew and they had a solo scene for Candy, right? But here's the thing. Let's just talk about Candy and then we can move over to Drew. So you guys know that Todd and um, and Candy are filming the movie The Past, right? I have one question and one question only. Why are they filming this movie in their home? I mean, I get that you trying to cut back on production and whatnot, like filming locations, but you guys are one in Atlanta. So you guys have tax breaks and tax cuts for filming. It's cheaper to film in Atlanta than pretty much anywhere else. So that's kind of confusing. Ty gives me, and this is no shade to Ty, because I'm a, 
I'm a penny pincher myself, right? But Todd gives me he would do anything at a discounted rate. If he can if he can wiggle away, if he can wiggle around it and not have to pay as much or pay at all, he's gonna do it, right? And again, I don't have an issue with that, but it just when it comes to business, some things you just shouldn't try to cut corners with, like on Candy and the Gang when he didn't have a generator at the at the uh main location. There are just certain things you just shouldn't try to cut corners on. And I think this is one of those things, right? Here's the thing. If you're going to film the movie in your home, you guys have two homes. You guys have the main house and the guest house. And I know I saw some people on Twitter last night talking about y'all doing that they have uh, more than one house. And y'all just, y'all just do, y'all just, um, y'all, it's like y'all new here. Well, the thing is they're filming in their main house. I wouldn't want so many people. I'm sorry. I'm, oh, no, 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 no. I just wouldn't want that many people in my house. Like, let's just keep it a book. I wouldn't want that many people in my my home. And then the sex scene that they filmed, the sex scene was filmed in Candy and Todd's bed. I'm like, uh, uh, ain't no way, Jesus. You are not going to film a sex scene in my bed. Oh, no. I just found that a little cringe. Like, it was just a little cringe for me, but I, maybe not for them. Well, no, I think it was even cringy for Candy. I think it was a little cringy for Candy, too. Because when she told the ladies later about that, later about it, I think it's it, it's cringy. It, it's, it's cringy. It's cringy. Very cringy. Um, where are we at? Like I said, this episode, it was, it didn't give me anything. So I don't expect this review to be long at all. Now, here's another thing. So Monietta was, oh, they got an intimacy coach for Drew, right? Or anybody on the set who has an issue with, you know, has a problem with that, right? And Drew said she was nervous about it. So Candy let her know that there was an intimacy coach. Um, they also talked about, um, Courtney, right? Now you guys remember last week, um, it was brought up that or maybe the week before i don't remember when the hell it was brought up but it was brought up that courtney had called drew a bitch right so monietta has a video of courtney's point now i will say in that moment when you look at the at the clip she is she's so courtney says she didn't say the word she doesn't say that word right well that's a lie the lie detective determined that that was a lie because you absolutely said the word bitch you know what i'm saying now who she's calling the bitch it's still a little question mark for me because she's talking about Drew. She is talking about Drew, but in the moment when she said this bitch, she pointed to Sonya. So I don't know if she was calling Sonya a bitch or if she was calling Drew a bitch, but she was calling somebody a bitch. Cause like I said, she was talking about Drew in the moment, but she pointed to Sonya saying this bitch. I don't care. Let's move forward. Let's pause here and move forward. All right, you guys, so next up we see Drew. So Drew was doing her sex scene, right? And once again, I just don't understand why we are in Candy and Ty's bedroom. Could we not rent a hotel? Could we not do some, could we not rent an Airbnb? Could we not do, I mean, why couldn't we just go somewhere else? Why couldn't we go to the, the, the second house, the guest house? Why couldn't we go to the guest house? Why? Why? You know what they like it? I love it because it just wouldn't be for me, right? Um, have they said where this movie? I know a lot of people said last week on that um, the movie's gonna be on Tubi, right? But Don Juan he tweeted he said that the announcement is coming soon, so I don't know where this movie's gonna be. I'll watch it absolutely. I'll definitely watch it. I'll even I'll watch it and even do a review over it. I'll watch it and do a review over it. Um, so yeah. Drew in a sex scene, it was all right, I guess. Um, so we see Drew, she's in her trailer, right? So Ralph stopped by. Ralph, 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 when he was talking about Drew being a thespian, I was like, why did he use air quotes for her being a thespian? I mean, you, uh, she is a thespian. Thespians are an, an actor, right? So she is a thespian. She has been, an, she is acting. She's an actress. Honestly, Drew and Ralph can get off my screen with this bullshit. Like, I'm over Drew and Ralph. 
Speaking of speaking of Drew and Ralph, so you know Drew was talking about how her, her character has some similarities to her. I was like, does she really now? Does she really? Because you know this woman is uh, at least bisexual. She is supposed to be naive. Drew's talking about she's a mother and a wife. She's also naive and got turned out by a woman. Don't overlook that, Drew. Don't overlook that part of it um yeah you guys this episode this episode i don't so when ralph was talking about this when they were talking about the sex scene i couldn't necessarily tell if ralph was jealous or if he was turned on and wanted to watch it either way go go away from me with this ralph um yeah you guys let's pause here and wrap up this damn episode shall we all right, so guys, so we, we see she by she can't pay and we see her as she's planning this party, planning this party for her granddaughter. I'm, I'm using air quotes for her granddaughter, right? Because the party is not for her. Well, I'm using air quotes for the party being for her granddaughter. The party is supposed to be for her granddaughter, but this party is literally for Sheree. So the people asked her, what's her budget? I was like, shit, if you got to ask that question and of Sheree? <laughs> you asking Sheree what the budget is, bitch? You better get that. You better ask her for a deposit up front, and then the day you know we don't come out and do nothing for this party until we get a full payment. Now I did say that the guy said he got they got paid on uh, Twitter, right? Because I tweeted last night. How much I want to bet that after this episode we gonna find out that Sheree didn't pay these people in the blogs. Because y'all know Sheree loves to talk about how people, how, you know, talk about Drew and what she pays and don't pay for. But girl, you're the same heifer. So we get to the party, right? So we see Bob and his cocked eye there. Oh, God. Has Bob gotten bigger? Because Bob looked like he got heavier since the last time we saw him. Honest to God, what the hell did Sheree see in Bob? Baby, you have to see dollar signs when it comes to Bob Whitfield. Because... <laughs> That eye alone, his, his, his wandering eye alone would be a no for me. Just saying, right? Because I just couldn't, ooh, no, no, no. What did, what did Bob look like before they got, when they got together? I would just love to see what, I, I don't remember. See, yeah, Bob ain't never been, a, ooh, Jesus the Christ, no. Mm -mm. Girl, that has never been a looker. Oof. Oof, got in that eye. They but both of them eyes are like <laughs> I don't mean to be shady, but it's funny to me. Not funny, but funny. Like one eye is looking straight at me in this picture that he got. The other eye is looking right here in the corner. Who baby. Oh, that's him from college, when he graduated college. Bob ain't been, Bob ain't just ugly. Well, Bob is not, Bob is facially challenged. Let's put it that way. Bob is just facially challenged. Girl, Sheree, you must have, you know, I ain't got no problem with nobody who, you know, is all out for the, is out for the coin. Because, I mean, shit, get it how you live, right? But, girl, it ain't even Bob's, it ain't even his face. It's that fucking eye. It's them eyes. It's them eyes for me, bitch. It's those eyes. I can just not, I can never imagine having sex with somebody and look up and you, your eyes are just, one eye is looking dead at me and the other one is just going to, going another direction. Oh no, never mind. Let's stop, let's stop, let's stop. Because you being shady. You being shady to Bob. And Bob ain't done, well, never mind. Um, What are we talking about? I have no idea what we're talking about, you guys. Oh, uh, yeah, Bob was at the party. Martell's broke ass came to the party. Um, Drew arrived to the party, and Drew says she, she's not getting out, right? So Drew called Candy up and let her know, like, hey, it's a guy in here that assaulted me. I was like, now, Drew, what man assaulted you? Well, Drew let us know that it was Anthony. I was like, oh, my God, not Anthony. Not that messy queen. So, I will say one thing though, the party, the party was very nice. 
you know, Sheree brought Atlanta out. I don't care. Uh, yeah, you guys, this episode, I'm just, I'm just not really feeling it, to be quite honest with you. So we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, so the family, they brought the baby out eventually. The baby was sleepy. Um, what else? The baby was sleepy. They took some photos as a family. There was this one young lady that everybody was looking at, like, is that Bob's girlfriend or is that his daughter that we don't know about? It's like, the ladies were whispering that, right? So Sheree then told Marcel to come over and hop in the picture with the family, not knowing that who this woman is, just assuming that this is probably Bob's girlfriend. I'm like, um, I think that woman is a little bit too young for Bob. And if you look at her, she kind of looks like him. So the ladies eventually asked Bob who was the ladies. But before we get to that, Kenya. So Kenya spoke to Martell. She addressed Martell. She asked him, could they have a conversation? So they talked. So Kenya said that, you know, really and truly when we met, when she met him, she was only just matching Martell's energy. Right. And so he apologized to her and she apologized to him. I guess they good. I don't know. I don't care. Right. So this young lady that everybody's wondering, who is she? Well, it turns out she's actually Bob's daughter. And Sheree knew nothing about this girl, but his kids know about her. But Sheree didn't know nothing about this girl. And so that everybody, he was, Bob said that Sheree was on a need-to-know basis. I was like, wait a minute, sir. She was your wife. How was your wife on a need-to-know basis about this woman right here that she was saying is your child? Huh? A need to know basis, that means, depending on how long Bob and Sheree were, like, how long were Bob and Sheree married? Because that girl, she's older than Cairo. How old is Cairo? How old is Cairo? So Cairo is 27. And how long were Bob and Sheree married? Oh, come on. So Bob and Sheree, um, so Bob married Sheree in 2000, right? The, and they divorced in 07. Oh, they were married seven years. Okay, never mind. But damn, even in that time frame, you still didn't... Even in that time frame, you sitting to that woman that you had a, another child, either you didn't know or you were just a deadbeat ass daddy. One of the two. But your wife was on a need to know basis. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Run it back. Because Cairo was born in 96. So they must have been together before. They were married seven years. So they had to have been together. Oh. Girl, did he cheat on you? Cause this girl says she about this girl's looking like she about in her thirties, right? Either again, it either goes to the what I said a few minutes ago. Either he didn't know about this young lady, or he knew about this young lady, and he was just a deadbeat ass daddy. One of them two. Y'all take y'all pick of which one it is. I'll take a pic and let me know. Um, that's all I got for this episode, you guys. It, again, one much to it. I could have done without it. And let me know what you guys thought about it in the comment section below. You guys, subscribe to the channel. Turn on your post notifications. Share the video. And until next time, stay safe out there, you guys. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Be blessed. And I'll see you guys in the next one, guys. I don't know when I'm going to do Real Housewives of New York City. Today is just one of them days at work where I'm exhausted not exhausted but i'm irritated with people and so new york might not be up i might not do the live of new york today that's my problem i'm not gonna do new york live today we'll do it tomorrow on tuesday so i'll see you guys then bye guys